Hi everyone, Stepan here. After the tournament, uh, I'm going to show you. Firstly, I'm going to show you the, the last league game I played uh, at the beginning of April, and then I'm going to move on to Zagreb Cup and to the Versar Open, the tournament that I finished about a week ago. Now, I should say that I had a pretty rough uh, month chess wise and I had a lot of missed opportunities. I had a lot of games I was really unhappy with. And for the first time uh, since I started, basically, I kind of felt bad about my improvement, even though uh, everything went pretty well rating-wise uh, up to the last tournament. But uh, I basically, I've decided to work harder and more and better and more effectively. Uh, because I found a lot of holes in, in my knowledge, which is which is a good thing. I mean, any improvement on my level uh, should still be relatively easy and any mistakes should still be relatively easy to, to correct. Uh, but in any case, this is the last league game I played in the, in the third Croatian league. Uh, we faced a high-rated team on all boards. I faced a player-rated 2200, uh, a national master, very experienced. And I had a lot of time to prepare for the game, uh, but he did manage to surprise me. We're going to see what happened. And I should say, uh, I, I was... Okay, I, I don't want to ruin anything. It was, it was a very interesting game, an instructive game in my opinion. Okay, so my opponent opened with pawn to e4, uh, c6 of course, and after the main line, uh, the classical, we get the Korchnoi variation, knight e4, and I played knight f6. I've basically decided not to play the Karpov anymore with knight uh, to d7, because I get equal positions. I don't want to get equal positions, I want to play for the win with the Karo Khan, and luckily for me, uh, since it's my chosen opening, there are different ways to play it. And I, you could opt for aggressive setups, you could opt for, for relatively easy positions to play. The Korchnoi is one of those variations which leads to, uh, undoubtedly leads to complicated positions in which a draw is an unlikely result, which is what I wanted to achieve. Okay, so he takes, of course, and I took with the e pawn. Bishop c4, this I knew he was going to play. Uh, he avoids uh, the, the main lines, which start with c3, and the, the setup is basically c3, bishop d3, queen to c2, where after that white could either castle kingside or queenside, which decides the outcome of, of the middle game, decides the middle game, but here he played bishop c4. Uh, I played bishop to d6, and now... I mean, queen e2 check is the move that most people play. You could also play knight e2, you could also play bishop e3, these are the normal moves. But my opponent played queen to h5. This I wasn't expecting, but I was prepared for it. This, I think, has a name, uh, but I'm not sure what it is. To be honest, I still call it the Korchnoi, because everything after ef6 should be the Korchnoi. So, basically threatening a mate on f7. There are two ways to deal with this, and there were four Grandmaster games played from this position. In all four games, black played castles, and white usually continues knight e2, and black continues queen c7, uh, bishop to d3, provoking g6, and now the queen drops back to f3. And this position I don't like, and let me tell you why. The reason I don't like this position is because white is the one attacking. Uh, it's obvious that white could still castle either side. Uh, if white decides to castle queen side, then definitely white is the one holding the, well, playing the aggressive side of this position. Not to mention the c pawn moving forward, maybe even c5 making my bishop passive, may, maybe d5 breaking the position. I mean, I don't like these positions. And I should say that white, of course, scores extremely well after queen h5 and castles. So, for this, which I thought was a very likely scenario uh, in my tournament games, I prepared queen e7, and luckily for me, I, I did, uh, otherwise I would have been out of prep. Queen e7 has never been played, and my idea was kind of strange. This, this was still my preparation from two years ago, basically. Uh, uh, my idea was to play g6 here, 
and force the queen to, uh, to, to h6. You could also play uh, bishop e6, which is a normal move, and then after takes recapture with the queen, or you could just castle. But as I said, I don't want to castle kingside, I want to be the one attacking, so g6. If my opponent draws, drops back to f3, that's I, which I think is the best option, then I continue bishop e6. But my opponent did play queen h6. And now, uh, even though the position should be equal, I find it way more pleasant for black to play. Here's why. Bishop e6, uh, not forcing the trade, but white doesn't really have a good alternative. If bishop d3, then knight d7 castles queenside. What's the bishop doing on d3? So my opponent trades. And the idea behind g6 is that I can now recapture with the e-pawn. And what this mean, and here I was out of prep. This was basically the setup I decided to play if someone plays queen h5, and that was two years ago, when I didn't even play the question. But... In any case, so now my, my plan is to play knight d7 and castle queenside. That's basically it. And then we play chess. So my opponent castle kingside. I played knight d7. He played c4, which is normal. And I castle. Okay. And here I'm very happy with my position. Uh, not because black is better. I think it's equal. I think it's balanced. Let me actually see what the engine says. Uh, the engine says 0 0.14. No, 0, 0 actually. Bishop e3 and it's 0, 0, every other move, black is slightly, slightly better. But again, okay, uh, the idea is I, I, I want to attack him, uh, and it's as simple as that. <clears throat> it's going to be hard while the queen is on h6, because it's going to be hard to move my kingside pawns, but if the queen is on h6, black isn't really in any trouble. Okay, my opponent played c5, which is a huge positional mistake, I think. Uh, my bishop is perfectly fine on c7, in fact it improves my rook. Uh, you should keep in mind that this knight is loose and that it's defending the pawn, which is pretty hard to defend otherwise. And after bishop to c7, uh, he made another mistake. He played b4. Of course, it seems easy to start an attack when my king seems like a target, but there's a lot of counterplay here. After c5, a very thematic pawn break is e5. And now I'm basically breaking the center. All options for white should give black a better position. Uh, if, for example, d5, then I can just take it. It's a free pawn. I shouldn't be afraid of anything. If takes, then after knight e5, the engine says minus 2. And I kind of agree because all of my major pieces are good. This knight is undefended. Uh, I have a tempo on the queen if I want it, maybe my, my bishop is coming to e5, maybe my rook is going to drop to d2 if the bishop goes to b2. Seems like a very pleasant position. Uh, and the engine thinks black is winning here. It's For humans, I don't think it's easy to win, but it's very easy to go wrong. Uh, I mean, bishop b2, for example, loses straight away to, to knight d3. Okay, uh, other options after e5, uh, bishop b2 and bishop e3 should be the best moves, I think. Of course, the tactical issue is that the knight is loose and then that the d4 pawn is loose. My opponent played uh, a move that should be losing if two good players are playing. After my opponent's next move, the engine says I'm winning. Uh, he played rook to d1. And now there's a simple tactic in this position. You can just take a free pawn, uh, which my opponent failed to see. I can just take... Uh, and if rook takes, then queen takes knight. And if knight takes, which happened in the game, and there's no good alternative to knight takes, if you don't take this pawn, I mean, the knight is hanging. So if, for example, knight g3, I can just go knight e5. And I have a free passed pawn on the fourth rank. So knight d4, and the tactic is knight c5. Of course, this knight cannot be taken. Uh, because if pawn takes, then takes. Now the rook cannot be taken because checkmate. So after knight c5, black should be winning. My opponent played bishop e3. And here I had an opportunity to finish the game straight away. Uh, all of this, all of my moves so far, I think I was following my plan, which is good. And then I technically won a pawn because my opponent made a mistake. But from here on, I just played poorly. I played very poorly. So, I have to move my knight, <clears throat> obviously. The question here is, which pieces do I want to trade? 
uh, the answer should be obvious to me, and the answer is none of them. I don't want to trade any of the pieces. My rook is good, my other rook is good, uh, my queen is great, uh, my knight is an active piece, my bishop is amazing. Uh, this knight is strange in the middle of the board, this bishop isn't doing anything but defending the knight. And therefore, my move, knight e6, is very close to a blunder. Uh, the correct way to play this position is knight e4, of course. And knight e4 has an obvious threat, uh, and that's queen takes b4. The reason I didn't go for knight e4 is because I didn't even consider queen takes b4 to be an option. I was never going to take that pawn. And you're going to see later on in the game, uh, at one point where I could have taken the pawn for free and I didn't, that would have brought me victory had I, had I taken it. So after knight e4, what was the issue? Well, firstly, the pawn is hanging. Uh, secondly, uh, this knight is still pretty loose. So let's look at the options. If, for example, f3, chasing my knight away, then I can just go knight c3 and huge trouble for, for white. After rook e1, defending the bishop, which should be the only move, the engine says minus 4, which is an insane evaluation. Uh, Minus four. I, I don't think I would have assessed it as minus four, but after queen d7, for example, and the bishop retreats, I can just bring my rook to the center, and this should be overwhelming for me. It's a clean pawn up with all of my pieces extremely active. So f3, the engine, think is, the engine thinks is losing. I wouldn't go that far. Minus four seems like there's a clear tactical refutation, but I, I'm not sure I would have found it, or I didn't even find it with the engine. But the engine says minus 4. Okay, b5, which should be the best move, breaking my center, is also a pretty poor move. Uh, what can I do here? L let's say c5. I think I would have played c5. Uh, chasing the knight away. The knight goes to f3, and now simply rook takes d1, rook takes d1, and rook to d8. And again, this should be an easily winning position, uh, as opposed to the previous one. The engine says minus 4 again, which I think is a bit too much. But this seems clear. Uh, I have a passed pawn, the queen is stupid on h6. Uh, my knight is amazing on e4. Um, it can support my passed pawn. My bishop is still great on c7. So after bishop e3, knight e4 was definitely the correct move. And as I said, I didn't play it because I didn't ask myself the correct questions, uh, which one of them was, uh, which pieces do I want to trade? The other one was, do I want to take the pawn b4? So I played knight e6. I mean, black is still slightly better, but it's not simple. Okay, here my opponent played g3, uh, which I, I, is an okay move, uh, prevents any stuff on, on h2. And now I traded, which is why I played knight takes. And now bishop takes. And I have to be honest, uh, when I played knight e6, uh, I'd originally intended to just take everything on d4, take with the rook, and then play bishop e5. And then when he played g3, I saw that it doesn't work. But I still traded because I don't have any good alternatives. So takes, takes, and this, this was my intention originally, which is just a tactical blunder, therefore I didn't play it. Of course, if rook takes and bishop here, he has rook e1 uh, or rook e4. And I just all of a sudden have a losing position. So after bishop takes d4, I played bishop to b6, which seemed like the best option to me. He played rook e1, and here is the point where I just didn't take the pawn on b4. Uh, why not? I don't know. I... Again, I didn't even consider it. It's not as if I consciously decided, okay, let's not take the pawn, it's dangerous. I didn't even think about how dangerous, dangerous it would be to take the pawn, which is a huge mistake. This is just... I don't know how to explain uh, the lack of reasoning in this position. I just didn't even consider it seriously. Obviously, if queen takes, then the bishop is attacked. He has to trade. A takes. So what? If rook a b1, I, I can just go queen c5. Or, yeah, it's just queen c5. 
This is two pawns up. My king is perfectly safe. Nothing's going on in this position. I, I'm even defending the seven square. Not to mention that maybe in the future I can go rook d7, rook hd8, and then rook d2 and game over. So this this is a hard mistake to explain. Instead I played queen d6, which now the position is equal. Uh, and I felt that it was equal. He took, I took, he played a3 defending the pawn, I played f5, and rook ad1. And now, again, the correct question here is, which pieces do I want to trade? The answer to that question is pretty hard for some, to find for someone at my level, I think. Uh, but queen c7 was definitely better than what I did. Queen c7 defends the pawn. I'm a pawn up. It's going to be tough to win this endgame. Should be close to equal, but I've got better chances. Instead, I completely failed to recognize a resource my opponent had, and therefore I went for the endgame with queen d1, which after rook d7 and queen e3 and b5, if he doesn't have the resource he has, and if he or if he doesn't play it, then black should be easily winning. But my opponent is 2200. So if my opponent does nothing, I don't know, h3, and then I just double up. And then, let's say he does nothing again, I, I don't know, h4. Then, of course, this is overwhelming. My king can hide on a7, and everything's perfect. However, after b5, my opponent has a4. And I didn't consider it. Again, this is a huge mistake, which... This one I can explain. Uh, I just thought that my passed pawn would be too strong. And when I played b5, I played it to prevent a4. And obviously, when you play b5 to prevent a4, and your opponent plays a4 anyway, that means that you didn't consider it well enough. And that you didn't understand how strong the threat was. So, of course, I have to take it. So, okay, takes. And now b5. And this is actually the part I'd missed. Uh, of course, this I, I mean, I, I cannot take. This cannot be taken because I lose the rook on h8. So if if here, then then white wins. So after b5, I need to save this rook. So rook h to d8, and now b6. And now you can see that black is actually fighting for a draw. A pawn up. Excuse me, two pawns up. And I'm actually... I need to be extremely careful. So after he played b6, I had about 40 minutes on the clock. I spent 20 minutes and found the draw and decided to go for the draw. So the problem is, not only that this pawn is hanging, but that if the queen reaches a8, it's checkmate. Uh... Or I lose the pawn on b7 and my opponent queens. So there are actually three threats. I have none. So I decided to play rook d4, which isn't the optimal move. Uh, I, as I said, at this point, I just wanted to draw. Uh, queen e5, I have to go back. Uh, there's a mate threatened on, on c7. So rook d6. Queen a5, I played king d7 and offered a draw, my opponent accepted. Uh, I did analyze the game by myself and then again with the engine afterwards. Uh, this is all zeros. But if I were playing my opponent's pieces, I never would have accepted the draw because there's there's a chance for black to lose the game. And here's how. So this is pretty much forced. Uh, again, here we agreed to a draw, but had he refused, he would have played queen a7. And I have only one move, king e7. He takes on b7, and now black can lose the game in one move. This is the correct rook. Okay, so if you play rook 6 to d7, it's it's all zeros. Uh, for example, queen c6, I just go a3. Uh, something like queen c1, rook b7, and we are going to trade uh, eventually. Or he's going to give me perpetual. So this should be an easy draw. Unless I blunder my rook, but I shouldn't be blundering my rook. Uh, 
But if you do this, if you go with the other rook, then you just lose queen a8 and that's it. There's no way to stop this pawn. You, you're gonna have to give up a rook. So again, after king d7, I don't know why he accepted the draw. He had a draw. There's no way he can lose this position. But yeah. Anyway, he told me after the game that after uh, after e takes d4, he was devastated because he missed knight c5. So I can understand. He was sort of happy to have gotten away with it. And yeah, I, I, I let him go get away with it. This, again, not playing knight e4 is a huge blunder. Uh, and then... In this position, not taking on b4 is just just bad. In any case, this was my last league game, uh, and we lost the match, unfortunately. Uh, I drew on board one, we drew on board two, we drew on board three as well, and then I'm pretty sure we had three losses on boards four, five, and six, but I'm not sure anymore. So yeah, th this was just... I, I, I don't even know how to correct this mistake you can see on the board, not taking on b4. I mean, I need to ask myself more questions during, during games. In any case, uh, sorry for the long wait uh, and the long break from videos. I played the tournament or I was playing tournaments. Now uh, I have 31 days uh, until my next one, so I'm going to be recording every day. See you tomorrow, guys, with the next game. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.